As we come to the close of Women's Month, where we've been pushing the conversation forward with a mix of professionals from the sports and entertainment industry, we have here with us today a very special guest that I've had the pleasure of working with over the course of my time with Mayweather Promotions. And when I say that she can bring the class, the style, and the creativity to your event, I really mean that. She's also been very instrumental when it comes to me being busy working the promotions and it's like I want to be hands-on with planning these social events because I really love planning events but it's like I really don't have time for it she's like my go-to that's like I don't even have to worry or think about it and everything comes out just like I want it that's what I look for with an event planner especially because I'm very meticulous so I'll allow Crystal to do the honors of introducing today's guest Thank you, Nicole. And you know the bar is set high when we're talking about events, especially in Las Vegas. The things that you don't see behind the scenes when you go to an event, this next guest is the person who's responsible for all the stuff you don't see behind the scenes. And I've actually had the pleasure of meeting her. We actually honored her in one of our past events, the Titans of the Trade event, for her accomplishments. So without further ado, founder of Las Vegas Events Company, Phenom, Jennifer Burbank. Hi, ladies. Thank you so much for the warm welcome. And ladies and gentlemen, I promise I didn't pay these ladies to say all those nice things. <laughs> They're amazing women and they should really be proud of themselves because this is an incredible series. Thank you. We're incredibly proud of it. And we hope that everybody who's been watching has been inspired by all of the wonderful ladies and their stories. Your story was one of the most interesting in the best way possible stories. I can't wait for people to get to know you. As we all know, we like to start off the show with the icebreaker. So we're going to do a 60 second challenge, Jennifer. Whenever you're ready, Nicole's going to be ready. here. Ready? Ready. All right. Name as many animals as you can. Cheetah, panther, bear, rabbit, coyote, dog, cat, fish, wolf, buffalo, antelope, giraffe. Mm, I think that's it. <laughs> as many countries as you can. Seoul, uh, South Korea, I'm sorry, France, England, Japan, China, United States, Denmark, Sweden, Switzerland, Austria, Australia. I don't know. I'm going to stop right there because it's so much pressure. <laughs> I don't want to give your story away. Um, like I said, I have learned so much just going through your bio and all of the information that you provided with us. So I'll let you kind of share some of your more memorable moments from growing up and those experiences that molded you. Well, I actually started out as a basket baby. I was left in a basket at a church outside of Seoul, South Korea, and I was found by an American priest and raised in the Star Sea Orphanage. I've been able to get back to Seoul on a few occasions, and I've even been able to visit the church that I was left at and spent the day with the children at my orphanage, and it was an incredible experience. But soon after that, about a year later, I was eventually adopted by an Italian American family and they transported me from Seoul to Avon, Massachusetts. It's a tiny town, 20 minutes south of Boston. And I literally grew up as one of the only Asian kids in my town at that time. And this was a time where there wasn't any PC, there was no you know, welcoming cultural diversity. It was just tough being in Boston, especially on the East Coast, because they are relentless. So I was constantly under the microscope, and I was definitely the butt of every Asian joke. And I didn't look anything like my family, so that also didn't help the situation either. But if I could go back in time, I wouldn't change anything because it forced me, it forced me to be stronger, and it actually gave me a really thick skin that I used to my advantage today. And you know, I don't get rattled very easily. And I've also just know that I can overcome any obstacle that comes my way. When I tell you, when I was reading it, I was like, where's the popcorn? This is, like, <laughs> I was like, and then that happened and what? And I was just like, this is like incredible. <laughs> so thank you, for, thank you for, thank you for sharing that. So you kind of spoke to the next question of what I was going to ask. What, I guess, what has always been the driving force for you having dealt with adversity, having to deal with, like you said, just being the butt of jokes and like having to explain to people what your background is and, you know, just all of these different experiences, like what has been the single driving force for you to this day? I wouldn't say it's a single driving force. I mean, I've always had that, you know, self-motivation, that drive to be better and to succeed. 
But I would say that when I was younger, I definitely looked up to my grandmother. She was the epitome of a strong woman. She was a firecracker. She's Italian and part Cherokee. And she never backed down from anybody. She also actually ran all the business operations for my grandfather's cabinet company. And that wasn't usual for that time. So I remember she would practice one-liners and comebacks with me that I could shut the bullies down at school. And then I also have to say my mom, because I remember she jumped on that school bus one day because she was tired of hearing about it. And she had me basically point out all the kids on the bus that were making fun of me. So I knocked them all out. And then she actually like reamed them. She ripped them a new one. So I definitely respect her for that. And I always remember that. And she also always told me, I could, you know, be anything and do anything I wanted in life. And she instilled that at a very young age. And I actually took it to heart. And I still believe that today. Wow. Strong women for sure. (laughs) (laughs) So you, okay. Tell me how, tell us how you ended up in Vegas from Boston to Vegas and city. I mean, Uh, well, I mean, there was a lot of different spots in between that basically, I mean, I'll just kind of take you through the whole journey. And you might want to grab a cocktail because it's a little bit of a long one. (laughs) So I graduated from high school when I was 17 and I had the ability to go to some of the best colleges in the New England area. And instead, I decided on Florida State University, which at that time was the number one party school in the nation. I know my priorities are in order, right? (laughs) <laughs> but that set the stage for what I do today. I know how to party and I really know how to throw a great one. Right after college, I was accepted as a creative director for a company in San Salvador, El Salvador. And that was about 2000, about 2000. And then I you know, ran the creative direction. I immersed myself in a totally different culture and even learned Spanish, which was an amazing experience. But my real dream was to start my own business. So in 2003, I relocated to Miami and I started my first business, Phenom Recordings. That was a music music entertainment company and the focus was music production, but that actually led me to throwing my first event. In 2005, I met the Grammy award-winning group, The Diggable Planets, and somehow I actually convinced them to let me throw their concert in Miami. I had never thrown a concert before, or I've never planned an event. I had zero event experience. And I really hope they're not watching this right now. (laughs) Apologies in advance. But that little voice is on my head was like, you have to do this. You have to take that risk. And I did it. And I actually took out an equity line on my condo to finance the event, which is definitely not financial advice. I know. And so the event actually was packed, but I didn't make a dime. I actually lost a lot of money. And it was a lot of hard work for a big fat loss. But I realized that by taking that risk, I actually learned how to throw an event from top to bottom. And sometimes the best educations are from the school of hard knocks for sure. After that, I closed Phenom Recordings. And in 2006, I relocated to Las Vegas and I started my second business, Phenom Entertainment. And that was a focus on booking. Um, I would book artists internationally and nationally, and sometimes even traveled as a tour manager. But that somehow led me back to events. In 2007, I actually produced the City of Las Vegas Hip Hop Culture Festival. Shout out to Dwayne McIntyre. He actually was a partner on that. And we worked with the city to produce the festival. It was targeted to at-risk youth in the city. But if you've ever done any work with the city, you know how much red tape they tend to impose. So the city didn't release our promotions until two days before the festival. So I had booked all these artists and had them fly in to perform and speak to the kids. And they showed up to basically an empty festival plaza. It was a complete embarrassment and a total nightmare. And then shortly after that, uh, 2008, the market crash hit. And then I had uh, multiple properties that were upside down. So I actually had to declare bankruptcy. It wasn't what I wanted to do. It was my ultimate last resort, but I was about almost a million dollars in debt from those properties. So I had no no other solution. And those are extremely hard years of my life, but I made a promise to myself and I was like, I'm never going back to a nine to five. I'm gonna you know, hustle up business every single month just to get by. And those were incredibly long years. It was about four years before 2012. 
when I actually had the opportunity to work with the D Hotel to do the VIP launch parties for the VIP gaming. And all those parties were a big success. And that put me back in the game. It definitely was a life, it was a life changer. And from that point on, I reincorporated as Phenom Worldwide, this time with the full intention of becoming a master event planning and destination management company. And soon after that, that same year, we became the event logistics partner for Red Bull North America and the greater Las Vegas market. And since then, we've been fortunate enough to cultivate incredible event partnerships with brands, some of the biggest brands around the world, including Mayweather Promotions, which I actually heard that Nicole is starting her own business. And I'd love to get details on that if possible. I'm venturing out myself and to the entrepreneurial world, and I have acquired three of the Mayweather Boxing and Fitness franchise locations in Las Vegas. So those will be coming real soon, real soon. Yes, an exciting venture for me, and I look forward to seeing you at the gym. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. I mean, just listening to your story, I guess... Well, not I guess. I know that there were days that you would wake up and you probably felt like, how am I going to get myself out of this? Like, what was it that kept you going when you felt like you kind of kept hitting, getting stalled with these new ventures and things that you were trying to do and like it just didn't work out? Like, how did you keep yourself focused? I just always reminded myself that there's a thin line between success and failure. And that's definitely perseverance. So I would put that same amount of faith and, and actual determination and effort in every single day, even when I had no idea, you know, what was going to happen that day. You never know when you're going to get that big break in life. That day starts out exactly the same day as any other day. So after seven years of failed events, <laughs> I wasn't going to allow myself to give up. You know, what if year six, I gave up and then year seven was the day I was going to make it. It's I, I would, it would kill me not to know. So I just kept trying. Those are the stories that people need to hear because people always hear the success and they hear, you know, the good side of it, but people don't hear the I failed X amount of times before this. To hear from start to finish your story, I feel like it's important because there's people who are currently feeling like they're failing. They're experiencing failure in businesses that they're trying to do. And so to be able to hear your side and how you just like didn't see failure as an option, those are the things that people need to hear as just a little glimmer of hope to keep going. Because like you said, you never know. And what if year six, you gave up and here you are. So that feeling of what if, I feel like is always the thing that eats people inside. It's like, if I don't do this, I'm going to regret it. I'm going to be like, well, what if I didn't try this? What if I didn't stay? So I think that's really, really amazing. Exactly. I mean, I've had so many other failures that I'm not even mentioning because there's not enough time, but <laughs> those are just a few, the big highlights, I'd say. What excites you the most about working in the event space? I love it because you're basically creating something out of nothing. So you start out with just ideas on paper, and then you get to see those ideas come to life and unfold like at the event which is very gratifying. And I also love gauging the reactions of people and seeing them actually enjoying what you put together. Most of, the, most of the time they have no idea who I am or what I'm doing there. So I get the honest, true reactions. And I also love that all of the events are different. So it's not like you're doing the same thing all of the time. And I'm just, I just love planning. I plan everything in my life from going to dinner, hanging out with my friends, taking trips. Like I have crazy itineraries, but I just like to do it. And when you're able to take something that you're good at and you enjoy doing and you make that a career, there's nothing more fulfilling than that. Well, listen, I don't know how Nicole does it. And she sleeps like 30, 30 seconds a day. I feel like <laughs> I get my sleep at night. <laughs> she's asleep at like five and she's up at like 2 a.m. Right. Oh, I, get, I, I get up early, but I'm rarely up past 10 unless it's by force of work or something that has to get done. But I get up early. My, my most productive hours are from like four to six thirty seven in the morning. I get way more done during those hours than I feel like I get for the rest of the day because I don't have to fill text messages and emails and deal with kids and just life and everything that's happening because everyone in the house is asleep. <laughs> that's the quiet time. 
I give you a hard time, but you know what I take from it? It really is a mind over matter. Like if you want it bad enough, you will make time. You will get up whatever time it is that you need to get up because you understand like that sacrifice is really going to give you the biggest return at the end of the day. Your perseverance definitely paid off in many ways because now you have a successful phenom worldwide. You've rebranded it a couple of times. And I think this yeah. is the this is the one that's going to stick. But with Feed on Worldwide, you've actually been recognized. Um, your company has been recognized a couple of times. Can you share a little of those accolades that you've received? Yes, we actually received. Well, I was nominated as one of the Las Vegas's top 100 women of the year. And that was a pretty humbling acknowledgement. Those definitely made me feel like it was worth it. Um, we've, you know, been in the Las Vegas Review Journal and highlighted in My Vegas Magazine, Real Vegas Magazine. I don't really like to brag too much about it, but <laughs> it's definitely nice to get recognition for the work that you're doing, for sure. And that somebody recognizes that means the world to me. I agree. And where do you see Phenom Worldwide going? Like, what's next for you? Well, we are working on expansion. So throughout the West Coast and potentially Asia, which we've got a few event partners out there. So we'd really like to push to expand out in Asia and potentially also Cannes, France. Okay, so finish this sentence. I didn't give up because. Definitely because I would remind myself that perseverance is everything. And I was just, I, I guess I use FOMO to my advantage, that fear of missing out on that one day that I actually stopped trying. And, you know, I lose out and I never get that one golden moment that I was waiting for. So this is actually my favorite uh, question of the interview. It's, so you're gonna fill in the blank. It's the what for me. And it's, you know, what gives you joy? What keeps you going? Like, what is it for you? It's definitely the freedom for me. I knew that at a young age, I had a problem with authority. So there was no way that I was gonna be able to work for anybody for the rest of my life. That was pretty much the only choice, you know, be an entrepreneur and have your own business. So it, I couldn't answer to people like, what time are you coming back? Where'd you go for lunch? Like, that's not gonna fly. I don't even micromanage my team. You can ask them because I just know how horrible that can make somebody's life suck. So for me, it's the freedom. For someone who wants to be an entrepreneur and doesn't know where to start, is there a short answer or advice that you could give, you know, aspiring entrepreneurs? Definitely. You should read a book. If you don't know about something, there's so many resources out there where you can learn. And it's so easy now. You just, you know, Google research, figure out what books there are available and read and then get out there and actually apply it to life. You know, nobody's stopping you. Nobody's saying that you need an education to make something happen. Look at my concert. You know, I, <laughs> I, brought, I brought the Diggable Planets concert over and I had no idea what I was doing. Nobody told me not to. Nobody told me to. It's just you have to take the initiative. And if you really want something, do your research, read a book. There's so many great resources out there and just make it happen. Apply it to your life. The sooner, the better. And I can add to that to say, pick an area of interest, especially if you're going to be an entrepreneur. Don't pick something that looks good on someone else that someone else is having success at. If you're not doing something that you're interested in, that you're going to grind for, that you're going to lose sleep over, that you're going to pick that book up and read and take the losses. If you're not passionate about it, you're probably not going to see the success that you're hoping for. Exactly. You have to find what it is that you love to do. And that's the key. Finding what you're good at, finding what you're innately, you know, you like to do and make that a career. I'm so inspired. I love all of this. I'm like, what business do I want to start now? <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys are already killing it. I mean, you're doing the series and you put this together from scratch. I mean, congratulations to you. Yeah, I think the goal for us is like, we always just want to put out content that we hope resonates with people, but also inspires people because especially with social media, there's so much toxic stuff on social media. And if we can, for a moment, capture people's attention, whether it's for 20 minutes and they leave this interview feeling like this is what I needed. And we did something, we created a, a simple thing that was impacting to those people. Like, I feel like that's what's important. I thank you for being here with us. I thank you for sharing your story. I would say you have this fearless energy that I need to tap into. Oh, uh, thanks, Crystal. Thank you so much. Before we let you go, Jennifer, can you let everyone know where they can find you? A website, all of that good stuff. Yes, you can find us at phenomworldwide.com. That's F N O M worldwide.com. We are at 
all the social media outlets at Phenom Worldwide. And I'm just at Jennifer Burbank. So easy enough. If you need an event, you know who to find. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for allowing me to be a part of this. I really appreciate it. It's definitely an honor. And thanks for coming on and sharing your journey with us. It, it's definitely inspiring. Thank you.